Well, blessings, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, and uh, I thank the Lord for every moment of breath that He gives unto us, extending our probation that uh, we may live to glorify His name. Um, taking upon a subject which is uh, so much debated and uh, controverted and so I like to approach it with the most solemnity that um, the Lord will give me strength to approach it and uh, limit myself not to any human understanding but uh, what is revealed in inspiration and so I'll be borrowing so heavily on uh, spirit of prophecy what sister white has talked about this because i understand that we must uh, be able to understand the closing scenes of this earth history if we are not to be found naked and so i welcome you in the number 13 of the lateran series the presentation the judgment of the living period of time. This, however, has nothing to do with setting dates. Gospel Sounders, as a ministry, we are praying and uh, trying to uh, just uh, keep ourselves limited to what the Bible says and the spirit of prophecy there's so much dead setting outside there. Brother Brian Onangu has come up with the article on time setting and all that. It can be found on our website. You are free to look into it. Uh, I believe it's a good material and it is recommendable. He is part of the ministry and so we can look into these things prayerfully and uh, see where we harmonize and uh, how we can work as Christians without time setting, without dates, but uh, carrying on uh, revival and reformation that is geared towards uh, bringing in the sheep, the harvest that uh, the Lord would want at such a time as this. And so I want us to pray. Pray for me and pray that the Lord may give you understanding of the things we are going to read. Pray that the human impress may not be put on this message and i may be humbled by it if i'm corrected about it by whoever according to the light maybe i have not seen and another person have seen it i'll be humble enough to accept correction because that is how the minister of, of the gospel are the spirit of the prophets are subject to prophets and so we cannot stand aloof correction or that nonetheless i'm not apologizing for anything because i believe what i'll speak will be truth and nothing but the truth because it will not be by words but i'll let the spirit of prophecy speak for itself and so with the most reverent position that i can take i'll take and uh, implore the lord to guide us and uh, to be with us as we start this session let us pray heavenly father Thank you so much. We know without you, we can do nothing. What we need is the spirit of truth and Jesus Christ to ascend on the throne 
so that any human imperfections may be removed and the glory of the sanctuary may be seen both here and in the places the people will be listening and watching taking notes and reading uh, what we are going to go through I do pray that uh, I may be reduced I may decrease as Christ increase and help us to understand the things that you are speaking to the churches in Jesus name Amen and thank you this uh, is gonna be a session if you're watching put there the comments thank you sister Caroline hi to you God be with you as you go through this and all will be joining in please send in your questions send in your comments I'll be moving back and forth to see what is going on on online as uh, I go through this and present the Word of God and so I won't waste much um, of the time I'll go straight to the book of first Peter brothers and sisters have your Bible have your pen have a place to write because th these are not simple matters I'll go to the book of first Peter then and uh, where else can I start if I cannot start in first Peter 417 this is the best place to start this study building on it and going step by step here we go for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God and if it first begin at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God so clearly from 1 Peter 4 verse 17 you find that judgment begins with a certain group of people then it passes to other people it can be viewed as two judgments but it's still judgment what is judgment actually judgment is the process of determining a case and judgment has two processes the part of investigation and execution so the whole scopus of judgment is to determine when we speak about the judgment that is going on in heaven the whole scopus of it is to determine a people who are fit for the kingdom a people who will not rise another rebellion in heaven this is the whole issue that has to do with judgment and uh, it is not something new we find that uh, there has been a time where actually this judgment has been practiced uh, like take you to the book of Matthew chapter 22 I'll go slowly but not slowly so that you may take in what you are taking in the book of Matthew chapter 22 and Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servant to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they will not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are cleared, and all things are ready for and all things are ready come unto the marriage 22 5 and the remnant uh, 22 5 but they made light of it and went their way one to his farmer another to his merchandise 
And the remnant took his servants and treated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard, of, heard thereof, he was wroth and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their seed. Then said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. You find that uh, in the first clause of uh, Matthew chapter 22, there is a judgment going on both investigative and then when those who are bidden do not qualify an executive judgment follows that is the first judgment that happens for the house the judgment must start in the house now when you read 22 from verse 8 you find another judgment starts and also investigative and then executive or executive then said to his servants, that one has passed, investigative and executive. Then he said to his servant, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. Now these are not part of the house as the first ones, but these are the people just on the road. So the servants went, 22.10, out in the highways and gathered together all as many as they found both bad and good and the wedding was furnished with guests and when the king came in to see the guest he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment so the king came to see and he saw there a man which had not garment his eyes perused the room as we may say his eyes went to and fro in the house. That is investigating, looking into the matter. These people who have come into the house. Are they worthy? And he said unto him, Friend, how cometh in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then, so the investigation ends. Then the king then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Executive judgment happens. So, Matthew chapter 22, 1 verses 1 to 7, talks about the first investigative and executive judgment of the people belonging to the house then 8 to uh, 13 speaks about another investigative and executive judgment for those who are not of the house remember we started with first Peter 4 17 and we are looking at the judgment of the living I want to establish this thing so that we may understand as the Lord will lead us in what he's speaking to us at such a time as this so there we have two judgments going on both investigative and executive judgment and so when the judgment starts let us see then beginning when the judgment starts beginning with those who first lived upon the earth our advocate presents the case of each successive generation and closes with the living every name is mentioned every case closely investigated names are accepted names are rejected great controversy 483 i'll borrow a lot from the spirit of prophecy while jesus had been ministering in the sanctuary the judgment had been going on for the righteous dead and then for the righteous living i'm writing to eight so we are talking about the judgment that started with the dead with the dead and then it passes to the living now we understand since 1844 until when we are living right now the people have been living so how do we say that the judgment has been going on for the dead while there have been people living and we say that there will be judgment for the living 
at some period of time or some moment in time. There is some question that you have to ask yourself. It means that this phrase, the judgment of the living, corresponds to a certain aspect of living or a certain aspect of a period or an event that people will be alive in when this judgment takes place. That is why it's called the judgment of the living. Judgment has been going on, people have died, others are living, but there is a, an extraordinary phrase that the judgment of the living, which means that there is a period in which, a season in which, a moment in which, a specific uh, 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 occasion that they live in. That is why it's called the judgment of the living. So, the judgment of the dead has been going on. And names have been drafted in, the names have been accepted, others rejected. And so, this time of the judgment is a most solemn period when the Lord gathers his own from among the tares. Those who have been members of the same family are separated. A mark seal is placed upon the righteous. That one you can find in TM. Testimonies to the Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 234. So, during such a special judgment, actually a mark, a seal is placed upon the righteous. Now, things to do with the seal and the mark are found in the book of Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter 14, and Revelation chapter... Uh, Revelation chapter 7, chapter 14, Revelation chapter 13, and loosely you will find it in the book of Revelation chapter 15. And so, when you put all these things together, that the judgment has to do with the mark and the seal, you will start having an, a notion of uh, when the Sabbath is a test and Sunday, the rift between Sabbath and Sunday. It may, it may not be per se, uh, when you talk about judgment, uh, it may not be per se when the mark of the beast goes, but this mark and the seal during judgment, it has to do with the true worship and the false worship will be coming at some minute information later. In the judgment, you find that uh, gold is separated from the dross in the church. The, I like to put this, in this time the gold will be separated from the dross in the church. Chaff like a cloud will be borne away on the wind. All who assume the ornaments of the sanctuary but are not clothed with Christ's righteousness will appear in the shame of their own nakedness when trees without fruit are cut down as cumbers of the ground. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, page 81. So, at such a solemn period, actually the wheat is separated from the chaff. And at such a time, Many are sifted out, many are drafted in. So, when this work of judgment ends, God will have a people who their cases have been examined and decided. Before the cases are examined and decided, there is no clause of probation. But when the cases are decided, either for life or death, then there is a clause of probation. The judgment is now passing in the sanctuary above as we speak. For many years, it has been in progress. Soon no one knows how soon it will pass to the living. We are talking about the judgment of the living and the timing of it. I'll come 
to explain and give you this quote clearly and their context and so when we speak about judgment the the, the solemn work that has to be done is for Christ to have his church matured and then he can move to the world now you ask where do I find such a notion that Christ has to start with the church and when it is matured it is sealed up then he can go to the others to see what is happening I started with uh, the book of uh, 1 Peter 4.17, but I'd like to take you to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14. As from verse 14, we read, The Bible, which is the word of God, says, I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. So this is the first harvesting. The church is made up. How do I know this is the judgment, the sealing, and the harvesting of the church? Because the second clause says which judgment it is. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city. And so, in the second gathering, sealing, and judgment, the winepress is trodden without the city, and we know those who are outside the city and the gates are the evildoers. We know those who fall under the winepress of the wrath of God, as it is in Revelation 13, are the ones who have the mark of the beast. So, Revelation 14, 14 to 16, is not the judgment, the sealing, and the determination of the wicked, but of the righteous. You can see these two judgments going on, of the wicked, and of the righteous. We are talking about the judgment of the living. This is the series, the latter rain series. And so, there will be a great day of final atonement and investigative judgment. The only cases considered is the case of the professed people. And the judgment then will pass from the house of the Lord to the other people. In these cases, when probation is closed, there is no reversing. Let us see this. When Jesus rises up in the most holy place, lays off his mediator, mediatorial robes and clothes himself with the garments of virgin, the mandate will go forth, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Let him be unjust still. Reference to our published works will show our belief that the living righteous will receive the seal of God prior to the close of probation. Seeing the living righteous are sealed prior to the close of probation, it follows that the living righteous are judged prior to the close of probation. And since this sealing is presented to us as a period of time, the judgment of the living must necessarily cover a period of time. I'll demonstrate it. 1844, until the close of probation. Then the sealing time for the living happens at some time. And we shall be seeing 
what the judgment of living actually is and at what period does it take place so look at the screen before the work is closed up and the sealing of God's people is finished we shall receive the outpouring of the Spirit of God so just prior to the closing up of the work the sealing shall be finished and people shall receive the latter rain. Many would have us believe that the latter rain is poured out before the sealing commences. Oh no, the latter rain is poured out before the sealing of God's people is finished. Many would have us believe that the latter rain is poured before the sealing commences. But this is not the thing. The sealing must happen so that the people may receive the rain because God will not put his seal upon anyone who is impure. God will not pour his rain upon those who are still impure. When the sealing has begun and is in progress, the latter rain falls. Or to use the words of the end time prophetess to the world, before the sealing of God's people is finished, we shall receive the outpouring of the rain. So you see the receiving of the seal and the latter rain falling and the number is made up. But remember we are talking about the judgment of the living. It is also commonly taught that the latter rain is given to prepare God's people for the judgment at the ceiling. Nothing is produced to support such a claim. Nothing can be produced to support such a claim. It is purely false and exceedingly dangerous. We shall see that. What does the latter rain prepare God's for? I'll write in 86. At that time, the latter rain or refreshing from the presence of the Lord will come to give power to the loud voice of the third angel and prepare the saints to stand in the period when the seven last plagues shall be poured out. So it's not to prepare God's people for judgment and the sealing, but to give power to the loud voice, to give power to the loud cry, and to empower people to go through the seven last plagues. The work of the angel, Revelation 18.1, comes in at the right time to join in the last great work of the third angel's message as it swells to a loud cry. And the people of God are thus prepared to stand in the hour of temptation which are soon to meet. I'll write in 277. Don't, we shall not lose focus. We shall come to this judgment of the living in just a little while. The power of God has rested upon his people. They had accomplished their work and were prepared for the trying hour before them. The context shows this strong hour is the great time of trouble. Remember, I talked about the judgment of the church. It is sealing and the judgment of the wicked and their mark. And the church going outside to do the work for the people to come in. It is the latter end which revives and strengthens them to pass through the time of trouble. This is Testimonies to the Church, Volume 1, page 353. So, the receiving of the latter end just emboldens and empowers the messages it does not prepare the church for the sealing the church has been sealed that is why it is receiving the latter rain and go outside to do the work they have received the latter rain the refreshing from the presence of the lord and they are prepared for the trying hour before them that is the plagues god's people were strengthened by the excellent glory which rested upon them in rich abundance and prepared them to endure the hour of temptation the time of trouble they will receive the latter rain and thus be fitted for translation. The latter rain falling near the close of, of the season ripens the grain and prepares it for the sequel. Testimonies to the ministers and gospel workers, page 506. They could not receive the refreshing that all must have to fit them to live in the sight of a holy God. I'm writing 71. So there is not a suggestion that the latter rain prepares for the judgment and the sealing. All those holding this view are in danger of fulfilling the following prediction. Those who receive the seal of the living God are protected in the time of trouble must reflect the image of Jesus full. I repeat, those who receive the seal of the living God and are protected in the time of trouble must reflect the image of Jesus full. I saw that many were neglecting the preparation so needful and were looking to the time of refreshing, that is the latter end, and to fit them to stand in the day of the Lord and live in his sight. So, 
you cannot wait for the refreshing and the latter rain to fit you to receive the seal. It is receiving the seal that makes you receive the refreshing and the latter rain to accomplish the work and go through the time of trouble. Oh, how many I saw in the time of trouble without a shelter. They had neglected the needful preparation. Therefore, they could not receive the refreshing that all must have to fit them to live in the sight of a holy God. So if we are waiting for any power to come upon us so that to receive the latter rain, for us to receive the seal, then uh, we are trading on dangerous grounds. We must be sealed in order to receive the latter rain to do the work. I saw that none could share the refreshing unless they obtained the victory over every besetment, over pride, selfishness, love of the world, and over every wrong word and action. Are writing 71. No receiving the refreshing without receiving the seal. And so the seal actually precedes the latter rain. It comes before the latter rain. Not one of us will receive the seal of God while our characters have one spot or stain upon them. It is left unto us to remedy the defects in our characters to clean the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us. So the seal and then the latter rain. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, 214. You wonder how I'm speaking a lot about uh, the seal, the latter rain, and we are talking about the judgment of the living. I'm coming to that in a short while. So we must remedy the defect of the character, receive the seal, and then receive the latter rain. And so we are told, Repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sin may be blotted out when in Greek order that the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus. Repent, be converted, your sins blotted out. That means remedy the defect, receive the seal, and let the rain fall on you. Repentance and true conversion must prepare us for the judgment and blotting out of sins. It must be the deep repentance called for in, laud in the laudition message and the antitypical day of atonement. The blotting out of sin is the blessing of the judgment. All that day shall the priest, on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be clean from all your sin before the Lord. Leviticus 16.30 This is a special atonement to remove the record of sin, not alone in books of heaven, but in the inner sanctuary of the soul. As in the final atonement, the sins of the truly pertinent are to be blotted from the books of heaven, no more to be remembered or come into mind. Patriarchs and Prophets 358. The refreshing from the presence of the Lord revives God's people from their great soul affliction with the experience as they enter into the judgment of the most holy place by faith. They will receive the latter rain and thus be fitted for translation. So the latter rain fits us for translation. It happens after the seal, after the seal has been given unto God. Us. And he shall send Jesus. We must receive him in the heart first before we see him coming in the clouds of the air. God grant that none of his dear people will be so blind as to be looking to the time of the latter rain to fit them to stand in the judgment to receive the seal of God. So, the hour of judgment is come, 1844, and it has been going on. Now we want to enter into the gist of the matter. Christ is in the most holy place. He is waiting to blot out all our sins, patiently waiting to judge his people and give the truly pertinent ones the precious final atonement. So we have the beginning of the atonement, we have the final atonement. We have the beginning of the judgment and the ending of the judgment. In the beginning of the atonement, then we have the beginning of the investigative judgment, which starts with the dead. In the final atonement, it is there that now the judgment passes from the dead to the living. Now, this is where the crux of the matter is. The beginning of the investigative judgment in 1844 brings about the judgment of the dead. It starts with the dead. In the final atonement, now the dead have been judged and the cases moves from the dead to the living. The door to this experience is open. Jesus invites his people to enter into the blessing of the hour 
of judgment. As the Jewish of all gathered around the sanctuary of the, on the, for the day of atonement, so we are called to cooperate with Christ in this great work of cleansing the sanctuary. We are to come to Mount Zion with true penitence and humility, with broken and contrite spirits, yet through the mercy and merits of Jesus alone, having boldness to enter into the presence of judgment. 1 John 4 17, to plead for the precious blotting out of sins. This is not something for us to do at some future date. It is time to seek this experience now. The door is open now. Christ invites us to come now. We have delayed the sealing long enough. God wants to seal people for the last work. His servants are to be distinguished from the world by the seal of the living God. Their words and their works are to reveal that they are laborers together with God. Then having the seal of the living God, God's people will be blessed with the times of refreshing that will fit them for the translation, the glorious appearing of the Son of Man, and an abundant entrance in the kingdom of the eternal Father. The judgment of the living. This is the place that now I want to concentrate a little bit my energy. Let us go through some quotes that speaks about the judgment of the living and see the timing, the period that it takes place. And I'll start with the 1SM that is Selected Messages Book 1, page 125, paragraph 1. It says, this is a, a time that I'm entering into the presentation more fully, the judgment of the living and see when it takes place. I want you now to be careful. I want you to listen. I want you to write. I want you to pull up your antennas. Let nothing pass you by. The video will be there. You can revisit it, pause and pause and pray and study about it. So, here we find a quote. It says, In 1844, our great high priest entered the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. This is 1 SM 125.1, Selected Messages, Book 1, page 125, paragraph 1. In 1844, our great high priest entered the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary to begin the work of the investigative judgment. The cases of the righteous dead have been passing in review before God. Remember, this is the first work of the investigative judgment. The judgment of the cases of the dead. When that work shall be completed, judgment is to be pronounced upon the living. This is the judgment of the living. And as we have seen in the quote above, it takes time at the final atonement. As we have seen in uh, 7 BC 969, I'll just put it on the screen so that we may go back and forth. The hour of judgment is come. Christ is in the most holy place. He is waiting to blot out all our sins, patiently waiting to judge his people and give the truly pertinent ones the precious final atonement. So, going back, you find that the beginning of the atonement, the first atonement, the beginning of the investigative judgment starts with the righteous dead. Then the ending of the investigative judgment is the judgment passing from the dead to the living. And it happens at the final atonement. Brothers and sisters, I hope you are getting this. The beginning of the investigative judgment, the righteous dead. The final atonement, it is the judgment of the living. That should be clear. 
to us until that point. This is the issue that the beginning of atonement, the beginning of the investigative judgment, the cases which are considered are the cases of the dead. The final atonement, the ending of investigative judgment, it is the passing of judgment from the dead to the living. So, if the final atonement is the judgment of the living, we ask ourselves, what period is this? Are we clear until this point? I know we have to be clear. If in the final atonement, that is when the case passes from the dead to the living. When is this period? I'll be writing 254. I'll be writing 254. I think what I have spoken for now should be clear. I'll be writing 254. What does the Spirit of the Lord speak to the church. As the ministration of Jesus closed in the holy place and he passed into the holiest, don't forget what we have just read. I'll go back. Sorry. In 1844, our great high priest entered the most holy place for the heavenly sanctuary to begin the work of the investigative judgment. The beginning of the investigative judgment, the cases that are dealt with is of the righteous dead. And then, when the work is completed, the judgment is to be pronounced upon the living. And we found out this is the ending of the investigative judgment and not the beginning of it. The ending of the investigative judgment, the cases passes from the living, from the dead to the living. And we have found from 7 BC 969, uh, we have found that from 7 BC 969, this is the final atonement. Now let us go back to the quote in early writing 254. As the ministration of Jesus closed in the holy place, and he passed into the holiest and stood before the ark containing the law, he sent another mighty angel with a third message to the world. Get it clearly. A parchment was placed in the angel's hand, and as he ascended to the earth in power and majesty, he proclaimed a fearful warning with the most terrible threatening ever born to man. Continued on. This message was designed to put the children of God upon their guard by showing them the hour of temptation and anguish that was before them. So, the beginning of the investigative judgment, the cases of the righteous dead are considered. That is the beginning of the investigative judgment. That is the beginning of atonement. That is the beginning of the work. The final atonement the cases passes from the dead to the living it is the final atonement and it's the closing work and so and we see that in this period another mighty angel with a third message to the world is sent and so continued on this message was designed to put the children of god upon their guard showing them the hour of temptation and anguish that was before them. Said the angel, they will be brought into close compact with the image and the beast and his image. Brothers and sisters, you see how the final atonement is passing from the dead to the living 
you see how it is passing from the dead to the living. During the third angel's message to the world, during the time when people are brought into close compact with the beast and his image, in that period, the judgment passes from the dead to the living. The judgment passes from investigative judgment of the dead to the closing work. Their only hope of eternal life is to remain steadfast. Although their lives are at stake, they must hold fast to the truth. The third angel's message closes. The third angel's message closes thus. Here is the patience of the saint. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And so, while the investigative judgment starts with the dead, and then the judgment of the living is the closing of the investigative judgment, the final atonement, the third angel's message, the compact between the beast and his image, the closing work of the message. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And he repeated those words. He pointed to the heavenly sanctuary. The minds of all who embrace this message are directed to the most holy place. When Jesus stands before the ark. For all this time, Jesus has been sitting. Jesus has been sitting doing the work. For all this time. He has been sitting doing the work. But now it reaches a time that Jesus stands before the ark to make final intercession. Now, pause for a minute. We go to the book of James. I like this to come out so clearly because there have been so much controversy about it. James chapter 5 uh, and uh, I look at verse, uh, verse, um, verse 9. I'll start from verse 7. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and the latter rain. Now, the latter rain comes to those people who have been sealed. And they go out to do the work. Remember LD 179.2 that the great issue so near the enacting of the Sunday laws will weed out those whom the Lord has not ordained and he'll have a pure, true, sanctified ministry ready for the latter rain. And when do they receive this seal? We saw that it is in the time of the image of the beast. If you didn't see those presentations, go back to the last three presentations. They received this seal during the test of the image of the beast so that when the Sunday law goes, they can receive the latter rain. And so be also patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. James chapter 5 verses 9. Go back to early writing, 254. Jesus stands before the ark making his final intercession, just about to go to the door. We are talking about the judgment of the living. The beginning of the investigative judgment starts with the righteous death. Then the ending of the investigative judgment, it is the final atonement, it is the final intercession, it passes from the dead to the living. And this final intercession and final atonement happens when Jesus now stands before the ark, ready to go to the door. It is the time when actually the mighty angel with a message to the world is given. It is when 
the people are brought in to come into close compact with the beast and his image not the mark of the beast and the image of the image to the beast we found out it is the apostate protestantism i'll do so let us see this look at what is the image of the beast before we go back to early writing 254 by the first by this first bit is represented the roman church an ecclesiastical body clothed with the civil power having authority to punish all dissenters the image to the beast represents another religious body clothed with similar powers so the image to the beast is not the mark of the beast it is not the papacy but another religious body which one is it the formation of this image is the work of the beast whose peaceful rise and mild professions render it so striking as a symbol of the united states so <coughs> sorry this is what we are saying the image of the beast is another religious body clothed with similar powers to the beast which is represented by the roman church and it is a striking symbol of the united states here is found the image of the purpose when the churches of our land now the image of the beast is when our the churches of our land uniting upon such a point as are held by them in common shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and sustain their institution then will protestant america have formed an image of the roman hierarchy so we can conclude safely the image of the beast which is another religious body it is the apostate protestantism of america now the test for the people of god comes at the image of the beast look at the screen the lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes for it is to be the great test for the people of god by which their eternal destiny will be decided so when the apostate protestantism of america influences the government to make laws to uh, uh, go to, to make laws that will infringe the rights of the people. This is the forming of the image of the beast. This is the image of the beast, the apostate Protestantism. And this is the test for God's people. We are talking about the uh, judgment of the living. Now, you see that uh, the judgment of the living actually, let me go back to early writing 54. The judgment of the living is done during the closing of the third angel's message it's done when the message is sent the angel with the third message to the one it is when they are brought into close compact with the beast and his image which happens before the mark of the beast this is the final intercession this is the final atonement and in that period before the latter rain falls, the mark, the national Sunday law is, then actually the judgment passes from the dead to the living. The day, the hour, the year is not given, but the events are chronicled. Now, let me read this. The minds of all who embrace the message are directed to the most holy where Jesus stands before the ark and we see that this is when he's about to go to the door according to James chapter 5 verses 9 making the final intercession for all those whom mercy still lingers and for those who have ignorantly broken the law of God so at this time 
when the judgment of the li dead living the dead passes to the living the third angel's message is given the final intercession is done this is also the final atonement according to 7 bc 769 is it 9 bc 769 uh, let me revisit it 7 bc 969 and this is the time of the final intercession this is the time of the third angel's message to be given with mighty power and this is the time that the people of God are brought into compact with the image of the beast, not the mark of the beast. This atonement is made. Which atonement? This final intercession and this atonement, which means it is also the final atonement because the initial atonement, according to 1 SM 125, started with the dead. It is made for the righteous dead as well as the righteous living. It includes all who have died trusting in Christ, but who not having received the light upon God's commandment and have sinned ignorantly in transgression and it is precepts. In the beginning when I started, I said the judgment of a living, of the living, talks about a certain period. The people have been alive and the judgment has been going on, but there is this special phrase the judgment of the living, which means it is living in a certain period. A period, which kind of period? A period when people are brought into close compact with the beast and his image. So, while people have been living and judgment has been going on, but this judgment of the living happens at when the mighty angel with the third message to the world comes down and then when the people are brought into close compact with the image of the beast the judgment of the living happens at this final intercession and it is this atonement the final atonement when the righteous are to be judged who are living upon the earth and this atonement, it is for those who have died, the righteous dead, look at the righteous dead, but who are these dead? Those who died trusting in Christ, but who have not, who not having received the light of God's upon God's commandment and have seen ignorantly at its precepts. Now you remember I said that judgment starts in the house of God for those people who knew the truth and it, it goes to the people who never knew the truth. And so the final intercession, the final atonement, the final announcing of the third angel's message, it is uh, a judgment upon the people who have sinned ignorantly and so they have to now make a decision about if it is uh, 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 obeying the papal sabbath or obeying the sabbath of the law in this whole scenario there is a transition judgment passing from the dead to the living and the final intercession and the final atonement being made and the close of probation for God's people the seventh day Adventist church now I'll go to another interesting quote I hope brothers and sisters I have not lost you let us just go to the first quote that spoke about the atonement the judgment of the living. 1 SM. 1 SM. 1 SM 125 paragraph 1. In 1844, our great high priest entered the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary to begin the work of the investigative judgment. So the beginning of the work of the investigative judgment, the cases of the righteous dead pass before the review of God. This is the beginning. The closing of the investigative judgment 
now deals with the cases upon the judgment of the living the judgment of the living and it is during the compact between the image the compact with the image of the beast it is also a period where the mighty angel of the the mighty message the mighty angel of the third message comes in it is the time of the final intercession and the time of the final atonement now i'll go to something else pause this video when you have time and look unto this thing judgment of the living this is the series the latter rain let us read another thing testimonies to the church volume 5 page 526 paragraph 1 it says it is no time to be ashamed of our faith. We are talking about the judgment of the living and the period. We have seen that it passes from the dead to the living during the final atonement, the final intercession, the compact to the image of the beast, which happens prior to the mark of the beast, the NSL. It is no time to be ashamed of our faith. We are a spectacle to the world and to angels and to men. The whole universe is looking with inexpressible interest to see the closing work. What? The closing work of the great controversy between Christ and Satan. So, I want to introduce another point. At such a time as this, what time? At such a time as this. Which time? The closing of the great controversy between Christ and Satan at such a time as this just as the great work of the judgment of the living is to begin did you catch that the closing of the great controversy between christ and satan is that period just as the great work of the judgment of the living is to begin at what time brothers and sisters the closing work of the great controversy between christ and satan what is the greatest controversy between christ and satan worship false worship versus true worship this is the great work of the closing work of the great controversy between Christ and Satan. This is the time when the great work of the judging of the living is to begin. And we know this is the time when the law of God is made void. And the human laws are brought in place. Uh, I want somebody, if you can write in the comment, I want a verse in the book of Psalms that says that uh, it is now time for thee, the Lord, to work, for they have, they have made void thy law. If my wife is listening, she can search for the verse very quickly. It is in the book of Psalms. They have made void law. Psalms 119.126 The division of Psalms 119.126 Brothers and sisters, this is what we read. That it is a time for thee, Lord, to work for they have made void thy law. Go back. It says the whole universe is looking with an inexpressible interest to see the closing work of the great controversy between Christ and Satan. When the law of God is made void, when worship now has to be made clear cut, are you worshiping God or are you worshiping the papal instituted Sabbath which Satan is at the forefront, is in the background pushing at it? So, Again, I repeat, 
at such a time as this, the time of the closing of the work, of the great controversy between Christ and Satan, the time when the law of God is made void in the land. This is just as the great work of judging the living is to begin. Brothers and sisters, this thing is so clear. However, someone may want to convert about it. So, we have this compact, according to Al writing 254, of the image of the beast, when the final intercession, the final atonement has to take place, and when the final intercession and the final atonement has to take place, the judgment passes from the dead to the living. In the compact be between the image, the close compact of the image of the beast, which is the false protestantism of America, swaying the government to do her bidding. It is not the, the image of the beast is not the mark of the beast. It is a religious body, prote, a, a apostate protestantism. And so, at such a time as this, when the image of the beast is being pushed and the mark of the beast is just about to be instituted, in that, between that period, which the hour, the day, and the year is not revealed, the judgment passes from the dead to the living. So, shall we allow unsanctified ambition to take possession of the heart? What can be of any worth to us now except to be found loyal and true to the God of heaven? What is there of any real value in this world when we are on the very borders of the eternal world? What education can we give to the students in our school that is so necessary as a knowledge of what saith the scripture? Brothers and sisters, we are speaking about deep things of the word of God. Are you listening? So, we found out that uh, the judgment of the living, just backtrack a little bit, it is at the closing work of the great controversy. Which time is this? That is the closing time of the great controversy. I'll tell you, this has never been clearer to me like this. Some sins connected with the closing work of the atonement, final intercession, final atonement. This is where we have the closing work. And during that closing work, that is where we have the judgment of the living. Momentous are interest involved therein. The judgment is now passing in the sanctuary above. For many years it has been in progress. Soon, none knows how soon it will pass to the cases of the living. In the awful presence of God, our lives are to come in review. At this time, above all others, it behooves every soul to hear the words of admonition. Watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Mark 13, 3. If, there, if therefore thou, thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Revelation 3, 3. So, the solemn, solemn are the sins connected with the closing work of atonement, the final intercession, the final atonement, which happens, brothers and sisters, at the compact, close compact, with the image of the beast. The judgment will pass the cases to the living. So we continue asking the prophet, what time is this time? What time is this time the time of the closing up of the work 
Let us see what time is this. What time is this? The passing of the time in 1844. This is Great Controversy 1888 432 paragraph 1. The closing work. Hold on a minute. I want to make sure I'm reading the right things. Bear with me for a moment. This truth is so nice that we have to go slowly so that we may not lose anything. Now, what time is this when the work is closing up? The passing of the time in 1844 was followed by a period of great trial to those who still held the Advent faith. Their only relief so far as ascertaining their true position was concerned was the light which directed their mind to the sanctuary above. Some renowned their faith in their former reckoning and prophetic period and ascribed to human or satanic agents the powerful influence of the Holy Spirit which had attended the Advent movement. Another class family held that the Lord had led them in their past experience, and as they waited and watched and prayed to know the will of God, they saw their great high priest had entered upon another work of ministration. And following him by faith, they were led to see the closing work of the church. Which is this closing work? Which is this closing work? Which is the final atonement? Which is the final intercession? Which is the passing of the judgment from the dead to the living? They had a clear understanding of the first and second angel's message. And were prepared to receive and give to the world the solemn warning of the third angel of Revelation 14. The solemn work of Revelation, the, the solemn work, the solemn warning of the third angels of uh, the third angel's message of Revelation 14, it is when the second angel's message unites with the third angel's message, and then we have the message of Revelation 18 falling with power. This is the transition that happens just when the image of the beast ushers in the mark of the beast. So, the closing work of the church, the closing work of the great controversy, the solemn work, it is the warning of the third angel message of Revelation 14. Now, just to go back a little bit, solemn are the scenes connected with the closing work. Solm are the scenes connected with the closing work which ushers in the judgment of the living. Which solemn scenes are this and which solemn work is this? Brothers and sisters, it is the work The work of proclaiming the solemn warning of the message of Revelation 14. Let me connect this as we bring it to an end. When Christ entered the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary to perform the closing work of atonement, this is the final intercession. This is the final intercession. He committed to his servants the last message to be given to the world, which is the solemn warning. Such is the warning of the third angel of Revelation 14. Immediately following the proclamation, the Son of Man is seen by the prophet coming in glory to reap the harvest of the earth. 
So, let us put these things in their context. The beginning of the investigative judgment is the beginning of intercession. It is the beginning of the atonement. The, and it is the judgment of the righteous death. The judgment passes from the dead to the living during the closing work of the investigative judgment. It is the final atonement. It is the final intercession. It is at the time of the warning of the third angel of Revelation 14. It is the closing work of the great controversy between Christ and Satan. It is brought in view at a close compact with the image of the beast, which is the apostate protestantism, influencing the government to do her bidding. Brothers and sisters, these things I'm presenting to you as they are, so that you may understand the time that we are living in. I may understand. The world is preparing for the closing work. Closing work of the third angel's message. The truth now, it is preparing. The truth now is to go forth with power that it has not known for years. The message of, of present truth is to be proclaimed everywhere. We must be aroused to give this message with a loud voice as symbolized in the 14th chapter of Revelation. There is a danger of our accepting the theory of truth without accepting the great responsibility which it lays upon every recipient. My brethren, show your faith by works. The world must be prepared for the loud cry of the third angel's message. So the preparation of the closing work is the preparation of sounding the loud cry. In that preparation, the judgment passes from the dead to the living. That is when the people are brought in close compact with the image of the beast. The image of the beast then ushers in the NSL. We are standing on the verge of stupendous things. The trumpet, if it needed to sound with a certain sound, it is now. This is no time to joke around with our salvation. This is a time to seek what thus saith the Lord, and do it unequivocably without looking at the consequences. Preach the word and leave the consequences with the Lord. Do you hear me, brothers and sisters? Whether men will like it or not, with a lot of love, we have to go outside there and do a work that has never been done, knowing that the judgment is about to pass from the dead to the living. How I can present this message closely to you, I don't know. But the Lord is saying, ready or not, I'm coming. If there was a time for a people of God to awake, this is the time to do it. How I'm praying that the Lord will start with me and my family and our ministry and the people connected with the sins of the last day in proclaiming the last message to the world. It is no time to sleep, it is no time to slumber, neither is it time to make friendship with the world. It is a time that we must see the Lord working as he never have ever worked in our life. I pray that the Lord will impress the truth on your minds. I pray that something so drastic will happen to your life and my life that we may be changed. The reason we have not had a success in our message, as I close, the reason why we have not su success with our message 
I want to give you this as we close. This is from 2SG, page 283 to 284. I'll read in closing. Sins exist in the church that God hates, but they are scarcely touched for fear of making enemies. Opposition has risen in the church to the plain testimony. Some will not bear it. They wish smooth things spoken unto them. And if the wrongs of individuals are touched, they complain of severity and sympathize with those in the wrong. As Ahab inquired of Elijah, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? They are ready to look with suspicion and doubt upon those who bear the plain testimony. And like Ahab, overlook the wrong which made it necessary for the reproof and rebuke. Continued on. When the church depart from God, they despise the plain testimony and complain of severity and harshness. It is a sad evidence of the lukewarm state of the church. Just as long as God has a church, he will have those who will cry aloud and spare not. He will be his instrument to reprove selfishness and sins and will not shun to declare the whole counsel of God, whether men will hear or forbear. I saw that individuals will rise up against the plain testimonies. It does not suit their natural feelings. They will choose to have smooth things spoken unto them and have peace cried in their ears. I view the church in a more dangerous condition than they have ever been. Experimental religion. Experimental religion is known but by a few. The shaking must soon take place to purify the church. When this shaking takes place, remember LDE 179.2, the great issue so near. The enacting of the Sunday laws will weed out those whom God have not ordained, and he'll have a pure true ministry prepared for the latter end. An experimental religion is known but by a few. The shaking must soon take place to purify the church. Preachers should have no scruples to preach the truth as it is found in God's word. Let the truth cut, not our voice, not our tones, not our pugilistic uh, not our condemnatory arguments. Let the truth cut. I have been shown that why ministers have not I have been shown that why ministers have not more success is they are afraid of hurting feelings, fearful of not being courteous, and they lower the standard of truth and conceal, if possible, the peculiarity of our faith. I saw that God could not make such successful. The truth must be made pointed and the necessity of decision urged. And as false shepherds are crying peace and are preaching smooth things, the servants of God must cry aloud, Isaiah 58, and spare not and leave the result with God. I recommend to you the word of God, which will help you to unfurl the banner of the third angel's message. And above all, to keep ourselves unspotted and pure, holding on to the faith of Jesus Christ, not wavering. Soon, no one knows how soon the judgment will pass from the dead to the living. I want to be prepared. I want my family to be prepared. I want the whole ministry to be prepared. And I want the whole world to be prepared. There is nothing to fear. Perfect love has no fear. If you love the Lord, there is nothing to fear. You will rejoice that He is coming to bless His church.
And in this blessing, you will want to share with other people and you will go out and do some work. No time to sleep. May the Lord bless us and be with us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, your word is true and it does not lie. And that which you have decreed will happen, will happen. When it happens, we want to be ready. Give us more of thy spirit. Increase our faith that we may be able to stand. Embolden us so that we may go out to preach thy word. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing these things unto us. Thank you for the spirit of truth which you said you shall send, which the Father shall send in, in thy name. Thank you for everything. And thank you for such a time that we are living in. We are so happy that you are coming to bless your people. And so, help us also for us to show love to others and make them also have this blessing too by sharing the messages of love the revelation of thy character in the whole universe. We thank you and we bless thy name. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. God be with you until we meet again. We shall be looking at the ultimate character formation in presentation number 14 of the latter end series. May the Lord be with us. Amen.